So our study is entitled FASM, or Passive Health Assessment in Sea Mammals. And the goal for this project is to use a drone, or UAS, uh, Unmanned Aerial System, to fly over a dolphin's blowhole and collect its breath as it comes up to breathe. My role is to help develop the drones to be able to capture the samples that marine biologists need for their scientific study. The goal being to improve upon what's currently out there in terms of commercial off-the-shelf systems and to be able to push the envelope and really fill the niche in terms of sample capture that we can't currently get using technology that's out there right now. What's really great about this project is we'll be able to collect health data from wild dolphins in a way that's never been done before, in a way that's non-invasive. The first step to helping dolphins in the wild is learning about their health. And what this drone will do, it will be able to fly over dolphins, collect samples from their breath, and through those samples, we'll be able to look at stress hormones, reproductive hormones, and be able to compare it across different populations. And we'll hopefully be able to better understand the dolphins. Uh, the difficulties in terms of capturing the sample from a cetacean as small as a dolphin is as they blow that the blow field is relatively small. Uh, so the drone has to be really right on top of it. So the goal here is to really baseline the study and to make sure that the system works as intended. And for that, it is essential that we work with Dolphin Quest in a situation where we know where the animals are going, we know where the people are going, we have a really good sense of, of a controlled environment. And that way, we kind of baseline how the drone works, how the animals move, and we figure out all of that information so that we can then go to the regulators within the United States government when we say, okay, we'd like to test the system in wild animals that are protected under the Marine Mammal Protection Act. They now know that we have the exact parameters for how the system will operate uh, in that wild setting. So I'm one of the engineers developing the system. I'm also one of the pilots flying the system for testing. For me, on the pilot side of collecting, I'm using what's called an, a first-person view system. So I'm flying from the perspective of the plane. It's like I'm in the plane, but I'm on the ground. And then as we're approaching the dolphins, we will open up the iris, and we have a sample collection mesh here. And whenever they come up to breathe, we will activate a fan, which is behind this mesh, which generates a low pressure region out here to pull in the sample. This is the only way that it is logical that we will ever get a health assessment on some of these small cetacean species. So we really see this as kind of a fundamental extension of Dolphin Quest's mission to help protect the small cetaceans of the world. The benefits of working with, with institutions like Dolphin Quest is we know that the dolphin's safety and comfort comes first. We trust that the dolphin specialists will, will tell us if the dolphin feels scared or worried about the test. And that's always the primary goal, right, is we want to make sure that the dolphin feels comfortable and safe. In this case, you know, you know, trying to capture a chuff sample from a dolphin requires interaction not only between the researchers, uh, but also the staff at Dolphin Quest who are working with the animals to be able to get them to replicate that type of behavior that you need to see in the wild to see if your system is actually going to work. That's very difficult to do, and you really can't do that without having both the facilities, the trained professional staff, as well as the generous support from Dolphin Quest. I think it is essential that zoos and aquariums participate in a science and scientific investigation. We as researchers, there's not really institutions anymore like there was a long time ago where dolphins are part of a university system. We don't have that. So what we have are the zoos and aquariums helping us as scientists to develop new technologies, to do basic research, to do conservation research. All of that is being done because the zoos and aquariums have stepped up and said, we're gonna take that on our shoulders. Institutions that really help kind of do that basic science or that husbandry science or that kind of welfare science so that we understand kind of what healthy looks like and then we can go out and really help try to save some of those wild populations that are so affected by human activities. What I think is so amazing about this project is that it has the potential to help dolphins and whales that we thought at this point weren't going to be able to be helped and hopefully we'll be able to restore their populations.